Swaha. He is Div Division of Ag Principal Sciences in Division of Agriculture and Engineering, ICAR, AIRI. Dr. J.P. Sina, I please. Principal Sciences, ICAR, IARI. Dr. Tapan Khura, please. Principal Sciences, Division of Agriculture and Engineering, IARI. And Dr. Rob Ahmed Part. Mr. Perry, he is scientist in the same unit, Division of Agriculture and Engineering, ICAR, IAR. To start the session, I request session coordinator, Dr. S. G. Kamle, kindly take over and start the proceedings. Hello, I am Dr. Kamle, I am retired scientist from IARI. Good morning to everybody and dignitaries on dais. It is my duty to introduce each and everybody, particularly chairman and co-chairman, Dr. Srivastava. Did his gra graduation of agriculture engineering from Allahabad University in 1974, followed by MTech from IIT Kharagpur and PhD from IRI, New Delhi, uh, 1976 and 1986, respectively. He joined IRI as a scientist in 1976 and continued till 2007. Seven. In 19 uh, 2007, he joined ICR as a national coordinator of National Agriculture Innovation Project, joined, jointly funded by the World Bank and Government of India. He superannuated in July 2015. Dr. Sivato has developed number of farm machines, particularly related to crop, rice crop and vegetable. Besides, he has handled several external funded projects. He was actively involved in postgraduate teaching at IARI and has guided more than 30 students as a chairman or co-chairman and member. He has more than 200 publications to his credit. During his service career, he has visited International Rice Research Institute Philippines and Michigan University, USA. He has received number of awards and recognition, including Best Teacher Award of IRI, Fellow of ISE, Eminent Engineer Award by Institution of Engineer India, Fellow of ISENS, Outstanding Book Award, etc. He has served Indian Society of Agriculture Engineer as a Chief Editor, Journal of Agriculture Engineering, uh, and Vice President 2012 and two, two, mm, 2015. Please give him a hand. Uh, next uh, co-chairman is my friend Dingraji. He is presently uh, principal scientist processing engineering, posted at ICR headquarters, New Delhi. And Dr. Dingra is specialized in post-harvest organizing 
organizing storage of good grains, food grains, reduction in post harvest harvest losses, food safety management and systems, setting up of food testing laboratories, etc. Dr. Dingra joined ICR in 1995 and has been the uh, Publi Republic of Fiji uh, at I -A -I -A -I -T, Bangkok, Michigan State University. Uh, he, he has worked in CIFET also. Uh, he is the good uh, views, experience of food processing and thank you. Now, it is up to the chairman to conduct. Hello. Hello. Thank you, Dr. Kamble, for the nice introduction. I am really thankful to the institution of engineers for inviting me to this session which is very important. Just to say a few words, in early 70s with the mechanization, uh, green revolution, the pace of mechanization increased. And so the accidents on agriculture machines, including tractors, increased. A lot of awareness was created in early 70s on different aspects of uh, accidents on tractors, safety mechanism. A lot of work has been done, both at scientific level and Bureau of Indian Standards. And I'm very happy this uh, topic has been taken up today. Uh, without taking much time, we'll instead go to speakers, listen to them, what is the current scenario. Uh, we have five speakers listed for the day, and roughly we have one hour time. So I'll prefer that we devote 10 minutes for presentation, followed by two minutes for discussion, one or two questions. More discussion can be done out during tea time because people are known to each other or during lunch time, so that here we are finishing time. Uh, so without further, I request Dr. Dinga, my co-chairman also, to start his uh, paper on food safety and quality. Uh, good morning, everyone. So it's a bit of different uh, food safety, I think, uh, is not very well recognized by the people, all the people. Whenever some accident happens, some road accident, some fire incident, some building collapse, so there's a lot of media attention. But for food safety, we don't get a lot of uh, media attention. But food safety impacts all of us, be it the infants, be it the old, it impacts all of us and has become very important. And artificial intelligence, as the uh, this theme is uh, safety and uh, what is the role of uh, artificial intelligence. Yes, it is also being used in food, making our food safe. The industry is using this technology. I think I have come across machine learning and other things way back, I think, 20, 25 years ago. This all came into food processing sector also. So without taking much time, I will start next. Okay, okay, okay. So this is the friends overview of presentation. You can see first few lines in the red. I'm only going to restrict this presentation up to 2022 slides because I'm not going to cover food safety standards certification. I think that doesn't have much impact over here. So what is food safety? What is the implications of unsafe food? How to eliminate physical, chemical, and biological hazards from our uh, food? Then what is food hygiene, temperature? I think some of these things will be very good for everyone to know and understand how we should uh, deal with our food in our everyday life. I hope I will be able to make some impact on that part also. And then a little bit on uh, artificial intelligence in food processing, and I will not cover the rest. Uh, food processing, there are uh, two big partners in this. One is the food business operators, and others are the consumers. So food business uh, operators, they are into processing, packaging, storage, distribution. So they need technology in completing all those processes in a way so that they can meet the requirements of the consumers. 
So consumers, what is the most important? Safety. You buy water, you buy some packed food, you buy food from the restaurant. If it makes you sick, it's going to it's going to be terrible. So safety is the first for consumers. I think safety. Then is the sensory quality. If the taste is not good, you are not going to like. If you are offered some food, if you don't like the taste, you will see something which is not delicious, something is which is not touching your sensory attributes. So you are not going to touch it. People will waste it or they will throw it in the dustbin. So sensory, the nutrition and shelf life, they're not very important right now for this conference. So who is at risk? Number one, infants, toddlers, elderly people. Then pregnant women, immunocompromised. During COVID, we have learned that people with comorbidities, they were at higher risk, right? So if some of them, someone is having cardiovascular disease, someone is diabetic, someone is having some sort of cancer, so those people at higher risk, if they get some infection from the food, it becomes difficult for them. So for them, safety is very important. And then who the people who are taking some specific medications, right? So these are the people who are at more risk, but all of us are at risk. If you ingest salmonella, you are going to get typhoid. It's very serious to kill that microorganism in your body. You have to go to hospital, get treated, right? So what is food safety? Safety is like, you know, this is a common word, prevention, protection from illness, sickness, injury, right? So in the, in the beginning, I told whenever there is some accident, there is a single accident, there will be a lot of media attention, road accident. Recently, we had an incident of in which uh, a very prominent personality of India, Mr. Cyrus Mistry, lost his life. And uh, then the, everyone started that, no, no, on the car, rear seats, the rear passengers shall also wear the seat belts, right? But in case of food safety, we don't get a lot of media attention. So food safety will be illness, sickness arising from consumption of food. So even if you cook at home, if you don't store it properly, it can become unsafe and it can make you sick. Foodborne illness is caused by eating contaminated foods or beverages. There could be contamination in water. There could be contamination in, uh, from the soil, from the water, from air. So if it comes to your food, so it's going to make you sick. So lack of safety precautions can lead to hazards. So what are the hazardous substances in your food? Physical, we, we divide it into three, physical, chemical, and biological. If there is a piece of glass or a metal, so it's kind of a physical. If you have some hair in your food, in your restaurant you have served food and you have a hair, so you create a lot of problem, right? So hair, stone, glass, metal piece, jewelry. Uh, you know, in the food processing uh, factories, the workers are not allowed to wear jewelry and other things. There are a lot of precautions which they take, right? Yeah. So then chemical is, it could be pesticides, Lubricant oil, heavy metals, toxins, right? There is no, I think, no need to discuss all that. Then biological means anything which is from living organisms. It could be rodents, flies, insects. There can be biological hazards. And in biological, microorganisms are very dangerous, right? So we have to eliminate the risk so that we can make our food safe. Food poisoning, what kind of food poisoning? What is food poisoning? I think I can skip. Everyone knows because time is also a constraint. We can have more discussion. So symptoms of food poisoning are vomiting, diarrhea, nausea, fever. The moment you ingest something, you will, your body will react to that, right? Types of food that are considered high risk in terms of food poisoning, you can uh, read it in that blog. High protein foods such as meat and poultry, dairy products, egg and egg products, soups, stews, stocks, rice, any product that requires refrigeration to prevent it from spoiling. You will see most of the um, foods which belong to non-vegetarian category are at more risk rather than our vegetables or our cereal products or millets, right? Our roti aap le jai, pack karke gaon se log roti leke aate hai office mein, but they don't bring the curry, right? So maybe that uh, the roti is more safe compared to the curry because it is cooked at 6 or 7 in the morning and it will be at the temperature of around 30 degrees Celsius. By the time lunch, your curries will be spoiled. What are the methods to prevent or eliminate hazards? So in case of to remove the physical hazard, we have cleaning, magnetic separators, maintenance of equipment, hair nets, nose. So I'm going to skip that chemical, biological. The, there are different methods to prevent and eliminate these hazards. And uh, these are practiced. 
we have uh, good agricultural practices also good hygienic practices and all those are these are there so there are standard operating procedures which the industries they follow similarly for uh, restaurants and for hotels like this there are some procedures which are followed and there are inspections also and uh, food safety standards authority of india has also made certain things mandatory so that whatever you consume in an eatery or a restaurant or from a food processing business is safe for the human being so that we have less of illness and less burden on our public health system this is one important thing temperature control right the danger zone is 5 degree to 60 degree celsius so almost all of us throughout the year in india i think our temperature they remain in the danger zone so if you cook food at 7 am in the morning pack your tiffin and by the time it is 1 pm do you think it will be safe if you have say if you take chicken curry or egg curry or anything it's not going to be safe some microorganisms will be growing so it can make you there may not be pathogens but they can make you minor cause minor illness and that they will also spoil the taste so the temperature range within which the bacteria grows rapidly is 5 degree to 60 degree celsius so what we have to do is consume either refrigerate or you consume it within 2 hours so these are some of the uh, instructions i will not go into the detail keep hot food hot and cold food cold this is a simple principle right otherwise thanda hoga to reheat it and then you eat right something is lying on your kitchen shelf you cook in the morning after 2 3 hours you come if you eat it as such not good what we do is we heat it and then we consume it so this pest control i will not go detail pest control is then personal hygiene is important so when we come to artificial intelligence hygiene pest control these are the areas where already artificial intelligence is being used by the industries right similarly food storage packaging labeling retailing everywhere food uh, artificial intelligence is being used i will quickly personal hygiene is mostly important for food handlers and workers at home if you have a maid if they don't maintain personal hygiene it can make your food contaminated workers suffering from diarrhea vomiting flu fever etc are not permitted to work right so this is the one procedure for the food business operator so if you have to if i am the owner i am not sitting every time in the uh, factory and if i am depending on people how we are using the technology so that is the challenge right so people are now using technology people are using cameras so they are watching their workers whether they are following the guidelines or the standard operating procedures or not and if there is any discrepancy the computer then sends a signal to the top management similarly food storage we have dry cold rooms and fridges we have freezers so we have to maintain them so that they work properly and they are also clean and sanitized from time to time so this is the food storage rule 2r 4r rule i think this is important everyone can note this if the products are in the temperature danger zone that is 5 degree to 60 degree celsius if your food is there for less than 2 hours it may be returned to cold storage cooked or consumed 2 ghante mein usko aap consume kar le don't leave it right jaise aapne khana banaya hai to 2 ghante mein aap usko within 2 hours if it is consumed it is good from 2 hours to 4 hours if it stays in your temperature zone must be cooked consumed or discarded for more than 4 hours it must be discarded right so it is mostly danger for all the non veg foods right but for like vegetables curries indian food is bit safer the temperature this 2 hour 4 hour rule doesn't it can go up to say 6 hour rule because what we do is we put a lot of salt oil and we do a lot of cooking right so our food is so the vegetarian food the curries or our vegetable or dal they are more safe they can last for a little bit more time then cleaning you all know it is nothing important i have just put some points because of the, for this because this presentation is mostly for the students right waste disposal is also important i will come to some allergens i will skip so now i will come to this applications of artificial intelligence in the food industry sorting products and packages and products 
around 20 years ago, I have come across some color sorters in uh, rice processing industry in Punjab. Now they have become uh, common in almost all rice processing industries. The rice you get in one kg or five kg packs, you don't get a single black or brown grain in that. So there they use machine learning algorithms and the cameras, they watch the grains and then they then there is air which blows out the bad grains, right? So you get the all good grains. Similarly, now we have technologies which can uh, uh, look at the way human being. When you go to the market to buy apples or vegetables, what do you do? So similarly, the machines have been made because our eyes, we only use vision, right? So the machines now have the capability of vision as well as they can look inside the product, right? Whether your apple is brown inside or not, the machine can tell. How sweet the apple is, the machine can tell. How sweet the mango is, the machine can tell. And then if there are any defects inside, if there are flies or any insects inside, the machines can detect. Because a lot of technologies like near infrared spectroscopy, X-ray imaging, hyperspectral imaging, so all these technologies are used to uh, sort the pears, apples, bananas, and everything. Mostly the European companies, there is one in uh, Netherlands, I think Somra. And there, I think for the last 20 years, they're using these technologies and they have made uh, machines with artificial intelligence which can sort and grade your product. So once the pears or apples come, they will be of one quality and then they are marketed. Dr. Thira, please. Right. Similarly, for food safety compliance, cleanliness, and developing products and assisting customers with this, everywhere uh, the companies are using artificial intelligence. In India, also we have some companies with whom we work. They are making some machines to sort oranges, lemons, mangoes, wherever we have problems. So sorting and grading machines are now also being made. Our uh, universities, our students, they're doing masters and PhD and they're creating a lot of database for artificial intelligence of pictures and others, right? So based on those databases, uh, there are some companies who are developing machines which can sort and grade these food products, right? Thank you so much for your patience. I will skip rest of the presentation. This is a long presentation. Right? Thank you, Dr. Thank Dr. you yeah. so much. For a nice overview. May we have one or two questions from the audience, please? Anything. Food safety in our home and our personal life is very important. I think all of us must read about it and follow certain rules because in our home, all the children are sick. Oh, yes. That is also you can use. Adulteration is number one, sir. There is uh, now Food Safety and Standards Authority of India, which has made uh, testing of each product mandatory every six months if I am making some product. Every six months I have to get my product tested from an accredited lab, independent lab, and keep a repo. And then there are food safety inspectors which go and take the samples and get it tested. So these are the measures which the government is taking to prevent adulteration. But these rules, uh, way forward will be more alert consumers. <laughs> Simple as if, if we are if we are learned about it and we are more aware, uh, we can uh, get the things done from the industry. As well as, uh, one thing is, these rules are still valid for the food industry, not for farmers. So, yes, I will share, sir, I will share one example. I will share one example. I was in Ludhiana, as Dr. Kamble told, at Central Institute of Post Harvest Engineering and Technology. We were getting milk from a dairy guy. guy. Morning, we boiled the milk and uh, forgot to keep it in the refrigerator. In the evening, my wife is also working. We came in the evening. Oh, forgot the milk. Now in the night, we are in a village where to get the milk. Okay, boil it, right? We boiled it and it didn't coagulate. So I told, forget it. This man, we were not going to take the milk. If the milk is not going to be able to take the milk, he has used some preservative or some chemical. Otherwise, in the whole day at 30, 32 degree temperature, sham tak doot ko phat jana chahiye. So these consumers have to learn more about food. So then I stopped taking milk from that dairy guy and then shifted to like this mother dairy amul. We have verka in Punjab. So that side? Any, any more questions?
Maybe sometime only mixing. No? Yeah, so shelf life extension, we always measure shelf life for the final product. Uh, for that, uh, in certain products, we use technologies like if your end product is dry, so shelf life is going to increase. Raw, raw material may have more moisture, but your end, end product is having less moisture. So there are limits for the moisture, the product becomes safe. Then there are some products with higher moisture. For them, either it is aseptic packaging, like you get the aseptically package in the cartons, the tetra pack cartons. So aseptic packaging, the shelf life is more. Third is we use some preservatives. Like in case of pickle, if you keep carrots or mangoes, just like that, they will spoil. But when you put a lot of salt and oil, they're natural preservatives. So the shelf life increases. So we measure the shelf life of all the products. I didn't get, sir, your question. Some companies are claiming algae refrigerator or other companies. We have preserved the food in fridge more than 24 hours. Mm -hmm. It's possible. In, yeah, there is temperature. If it is like 4 degrees Celsius or below, if you keep, the shelf life goes up. Hey, my question is, the, 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 the edible are after 24 hours or no? Ready, ready made or? Yes, the, the if they are claiming, yes, correct. Can consume. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. They use certain technologies so that it remains safe for you. Sir, you just mentioned that this AI is being used in Netherlands for identifying the quality of the fruits from inside. Uh, my curiosity is when Netherlands is using the AI for the last 20 years, why we have not gone way forward in this direction in India and is it available in India to date? Uh, so you can import it. Uh, uh, that depends on the market consumers. In Europe, even single egg is marked, right? And you can trace it from which poultry form it has come. You buy meat, you can trace it, right? There is traceability also. European standards are very strict. And then their consumers, the people who are exporting grapes to Europe from uh, Maharashtra, they are using certain technologies, right? They, they give you a standard uh, set of procedures that this is the product which we need, the big malls, right? But this technology, yes, not in India, not yet. We are use, still using human graders, right? In pack houses, we are using human beings. So in uh, Pune, I have come across Mr. Prakash Bafna is exporting grapes. So his grapes are being inspected by human beings, not by machine. So I think when the demand comes, we will be using the machines. Thank, thank you, Dr. Hira. I think more questions we can do during... There is one question from the lady, so that we cannot leave, if you permit, okay. sir. Thank please, you. Please. <laughs> uh, hello, sir. Yes. Uh, can you throw some light on the cost implementation of these AI technologies which you mentioned in your presentation, for large-scale implementation? Uh, I think for large-scale, the cost will come down. Uh, because the human beings are not now available. The trained human beings, trained graders, they are not available now. Even in agricultural sector, uh, getting labor for various operations has become difficult. Similarly, in pack houses, getting trained manpower. And then, even if you have trained manpower, there will be mistakes and your end product will be problem. So we are now depending less on human being and more on machine. Because machine will not do anything deliberate, right? So that we are trying to shift certain operations from human beings to machines. And cost in the beginning may be high, but if we develop indigenously, I think we can reduce the cost. Our institutes at Bhopal and uh, Ludhiana, they are already doing certain things and they are successful. I think once they do it, we have trained manpower for computing, for software development and others, and for mechanical things. I think once this uh, technology comes in, we will be able to reduce the cost. Yeah, this is a uh, two-way. I cannot uh, say no, I cannot say yes. But personally, uh, at my home, uh, because in microwave, if you are using glass uh, utensils to do heating, I think then there is not a big issue. But if you are putting some plastics, uh, I doubt on the plastic. So if you have glass containers, which can bear the heat, you can use that. So microwave is not creating any problem. It is only oscillating the water molecules. 
to heat it. So there is not an issue. Thank you, Dr. Bandra. I think some more interesting questions have followed. So more discussions can be had during this. Thank you, everyone, for your patience. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chairman Sen and my teacher, Dr. A.P. Sir, and uh, our co-chairman and learned uh, members in this hall. Today, we are going to just uh, uh, second one, AI, Institute of Engineers. And uh, I think nowadays, uh, last two, three days more, we are thinking about the safety for any person and other things. And uh, today, we will just uh, go to present, OK? You got that one? Okay. Okay. Thank you. That is a very uh, small machines. I think every farmers are nowadays using. And that is chaff cutter. Our farming system, we have a cattle in our home for the milk and for the dove animal and other things. And uh, that is a common practice every day for the farmers to make a chaff for the animals. And for that purpose, initially they have the small tools. Then after chaff cutters introduced in the farming. And uh, today, just see that how it's dangerous for the farmers. Okay, next one. Okay, I'm taking that. Okay, sorry. Ah, uh, you just see this one. That uh, this is a uh, survey of a Haryana some mandij, where we ha you can see that last uh, 10 to 15 years uh, we have seen that uh, 2,500 uh, accident occurs. That is reported by the farmers in the mandis for taking the compensation. That is only reported one. So from here you can say that the Rohtak and other area they have reported, and that is depend on how farmers are aware about it. That is depend on that, and how much they uh, claim that purpose. And uh, just see that uh, number of fatality as well as the um, uh, partial cut of hands as well as the argument. That that means totally disabled for that one. So you see that that is a uh, more numbers and if you see that uh, total about 40 crore rupees compensation given to the farmers by the mandi. This is whatever data I am showing that is the mandi recorded one. We have just uh, a survey from that one and uh, if you go that that is a uh, disability in injury is 69 percent. If you think that a farmer who are just producing food, grain, other things for you, and they are disabled, then how their family survive and how they are producing. If uh, in that you can that see that male and female, most of the male are in that condition. And if you go through that one, this is a injury cases with the caused by the factor. If you see that this is a from chaff cutter to pesticide, that is in chaff cutter, that is the most uh, disabled in that one. In fatality, there are other things also. So today we will just discuss that uh, different chaff cutter accident and different type of that one. And if you see the, this one uh, the in that right hand and uh, right legs, those are working for uh, any and uh, most of the human being that is the right hand worker and other things. So that is more fatality in that. In that uh, we have just uh, make intervention for that purpose. And uh, if you see this one that uh, how male and female affected with that. In the fertility, if you that, that, that is a most of the female, but uh, disability for the male, especially for the chaff cutter and other things. Many tools also, but this is a claim by the uh, farmers in the Mandi house. And this is a injury uh, sustained by the different uh, genders. And uh, just uh, here you can see that uh, different uh, condition of this one. Okay, I think uh, this is a tool. If you that, uh, uh, see that the 45% by the chaff cutter and how much 
uh, they got the compensation only 17 percent compensation out of them that is a uh, 39.25 and that is a six uh, count paid they got that one so this is a scenario of the chaff cutter how chaff cutter is dangerous for the farmers because this is a in the 20 uh, and uh, nine cases in the one lakh that is the so we can't see many but if you go through the farmers every village the one or two people even our childhood we have also just playing with the chaff cutter during daytime in the summer and that time and many also injured so this is a common injury that is a uh, occurs and the uh, for that purpose we have just uh, developed one device for the chaff cutting system that is a small one that's uh, cutter system just uh, overlap that one and for the sensing purpose you just uh, a sense put a sensor if you your hand is going inside just uh, is sense and you can take out but this is a uh, one phenomena for that you are making yourself safe but the wheel is rotating and that is a good momentum energy there so it can't stop you have not timely stop then it will be difficult so for that purpose you have developed some breaking system for the chaff cutter only farmers using their own at the villages uh, okay i think uh, this is running uh, can you uh, okay oh, no no you just put that is a small video okay at the end i will show you that one Okay, this is a small video where we have just put uh, small things which is used uh, in the cycle or any uh, local market or level material and that can be break. Uh, in video you can see at the last, okay, I, can I continue? Okay. Oh. Oh. Yes. If they feel that if hand is going inside, okay, they break it. So that is a small intervention, okay. Uh, next, okay, come to the slide. We have another in, uh, intervention. Okay. Next slide, okay. Uh, in that, uh, we have just put a sensor system where one beep is there. I think uh, just uh, go through the, hello, excuse me. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, just uh, one beep is there. If you put your hand, they detect your hand as well as chaff, so that they will just give a beep. And uh, uh, that is one video, I last I will show you. And uh, then after we have also uh, developed some braking system for the motor one, okay? So that is uh, just uh, operate this one. No, no. I think uh, already I have checked uh, that is working there. <laughs> okay. Just uh, okay, okay. This is the sensor. Okay, they just beep and so that farmer can take hand. That is a small device and that is not a very costly one. Uh, proximity sensor is there okay next video you can update after that i have one slide only yeah this is a motor powered where two brakes uh, we have used one brake at the motor and either mot uh, either uh, brake this brake at the shaft and uh, and now we are going to uh, make it uh, with the sensor based so that automatically if your hand is going inside they will automatically close one so this is a second intervention okay come to the slide so these are three intervention we have uh, developed and uh, okay. In that, e if you see that one, how it's uh, fast it is stopping uh, the devices 
of the roti. This is a common things available in the uh, market we can use for that um, uh, safety arrangement. And just thank you for this one. Let us uh, pull our knowledge together to make our farmers safe. Because they, if they are safe, they will produce for us. Thank you. Hello. Yeah. Uh, basically, my question is: These are the intervention which you have shown. Yeah. But the wire and the patta itself, mm. they are equally unsafe. If those have been covered or not? Uh, I think wire. That means uh, wire for the electricity or wire no, for the wire for the brake. Brake. Ah, that is a cover. That is a tube system of the brake system. That is not a open one. Okay. And uh. the patta. A uh, belt is, I think it is driven, most of the driven by the uh, farmers and we can protect by one cage also. It we is can there protect. or yeah. in original design, yeah. in the market, whatever is available, uh, it people is there are not or using. not? Otherwise people are is, not using. It, it, it you is are equally right. unsafe. You are, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, not available. Sir, I have a question. Yes, sir. Section 26 of Factory Act. Yes. Yeah. वो वैसे भी कहता है कि आपको किसी भी गार्डिंग मिल को कवर करना है ये ठीक है तो इसमें एआई कहां से आ रहा है और मैं कल से ये समझ नहीं पा रहा हूं कि जितने लोग यहां पे प्रेजेंटेशन कर रहे हैं इसमें एआई कहां आ रहा है आई हैव नॉट पुट एआई इन दैट जस्ट प्रेजेंटिंग योर रेगुलर एक्टिविटीज इन दिस ओके सर आप ये बताइए इसमें एआई कहां है सर आई हैव नॉट पुट एआई इन दैट this is a device, so simple device for prevention, device for the safety sir, system. This is a statutory requirement. You have to implement the Factory Act 1948 in Section 26. Karna hi karna hai. Sir, this is a statutory, not OSAJ or not ISO. Okay, you can tell your knowledge that the safety system is in the BIS. वो इस सिस्टम को जो फर्स्ट मैंने इंटरवेंशन दिखाया वो अडॉप्ट करने जा रही है कि अगर चैफ कटर बिकेगा तो सेफ्टी सिस्टम उसमें लगेगा लाइक आप जब गाड़ी खरीदते हो तो उसमें बेल्ट लगा रहता है बैग्स लगे रहते हैं उसी तरह एक कल्चर के जो इंप्लीमेंट सेल होते हैं उसके लिए बी आई एस स्टैंडर्ड है तो वो कहती है कि जब भी कोई चैफ कटर बेचेगा उसमें आप प्रिवेंशन के लिए जो सेफ्टी सिस्टम है बेसिक सेफ्टी सिस्टम लगनी जरूरी है अभी तक no, आप मार्केट में जाइए चैफ कटर चीज़ मिलता आई डोंट एग्री फॉर योर सर मैं सिर्फ ये कहना चाह रहा हूँ कि आपने अगर कहीं पे कोई प्रोसेस वो किया है उसमें एक्ट तो लगेगा ही लगेगा दैट इज स्टेशनरी या लेकिन अगर आप ये बता रहे हो कि हमने ये कर दिया तो तो आपको करना ही था नहीं वो तो हम लोग आपने उसमें कहा कर दिया ए आई नहीं सर यही no, नहीं लगाया इसमें यही नहीं लगाया दिस इज डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द सेफ्टी सिस्टम आई एम नॉट क्लेमिंग दैट यही इज देयर वो आपको करना करना था सर <laughs> वो आपको करना ही था ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू प्लीज नोट या या सर हाँ नहीं थी हाँ दिस इज इन वी आर नॉट इंटरेस्टेड ऑन पेटेंट या सर या सर थैंक्स टू गिव द अपडेट बट आई हैव जस्ट वन फीडबैक या योर ऑल सेफ्टी इज आफ्टर द एक्सीडेंट हैपेन यू हैव द ब्रेक सो ऑलरेडी हैंड इन इनसाइड मे बी इट कैन डैमेज रिड्यूस द डैमेज सो कैन यू मेक इट दैट यू कैन पुट द हैंड इनसा� yeah, yeah, that, that, it, it that will can be. Because you know, uh, when he had the break, uh, yeah. already incident is happening. We are, we are incorporating sensor as well as the braking with that one. We have shown that one sensor, if you are putting your hand, they are beeping. Beeping action can be break the system. No, no. when the beeping is a break should be automated. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that uh, should be it there. It will save the total uh, hand. Otherwise, yeah. if you put the brake manual, no, that should already, be there. That should already be there. one portion that, of your hand damage. That is going to be there. Okay, okay. okay thank you. Thank, thank you, Dr. Shwa. Thanks. Very interesting thing. Uh, we move on to next another very interesting uh, topic: panorama of aerial robot for smart farming by Dr. J. P. Sinha.
Hello, respected uh, chairman and uh, senior colleagues, dear friends. Uh, here I am going to. Uh, I am going to speak about the panorama of aerial robot for the smart farming. Why a smart farming? As we all know that uh, our farmers are working in very harsh conditions, and these harsh conditions are the re repellent for the young youth to come in the farming community. If the derogatory should be addressed properly, then the, our uh, youth of the different sectors, they can come over here, and the requirement of this ag agriculture or the human being can be addressed easily. So the, in this respect, uh, I want to uh, show you the, some uh, statement of uh, M.S. Shominathan, who is the legend of uh, the living legend of the agriculture. The future belongs to the country with grains, not guns. And the grains are coming from the agriculture. So this, uh, how this agriculture production matrix is uh, working. Agriculture production matrix is mainly the soil, water, and environment. So just I am coming to this topic, uh, that the robot. This robot is a, what is robot first I define that is a programmable machine capable for carrying out uh, the complex series of actions automatically. So here, there are three types of the robots available. That the aerial, ground, and underwater. I am going to address this aerial robot, how this in agriculture it can be used. This is the unman unmanned aerial vacuum, commonly known as a drone. So what are the features of this? This is the aerial vehicle, and uh, when uh, we were a student uh, in 80s, at that time also aerial vehicle, not in India, there are other places, aerial vehicle is being used in agriculture for spraying or the dusting. But how this is different? So because this can operate at uh, the lower altitude, and from the lower altitude, it can generate uh, the information which can be useful for the modern agricultures. And the uh, satellites are also working, but in the satellites information is not available uh, always. Uh, uh, always, but uh, in the latter time, and this uh, resolution is more. Here at the lower altitude operation, we can get uh, the information of the uh, about uh, two inches also. So that much accuracy at the lower cost we can get. This uh, target uh, is, uh, as this vehicle is flying at the lower altitude, this uh, um, targets uh, means the agriculture plants can be addressed for the several remedy work I will cover in later on. And the accurate and the site specific and real time monitoring can be done with this aerial robot. And the, this uh, for the spraying and dusting and other operations, the faster operation we can do uh, with respect to the ground working machines. And the other thing that uh, in the harsh conditions or the difficult terrain area also this is helpful where uh, we cannot move the heavy agriculture machines. So just uh, for uh, uh, sake of this uh, knowing, these are the common aerial robot parts and which can be assembled and can be utilized for the different work. 
And uh, here uh, I want to just show you that uh, what are the flight control systems. Means here the position, velocity, and altitude. These three controls. Here this AI is working. It's a programmable and the sensor based. Its system is a working. And this uh, is a firmware, how it uh, works in it. Now I am coming to the things that how this information uh, and interweaving of the information and this smart electronics uh, we can use for the agriculture. Here first uh, uh, this uh, boosting this profitability and sustainability, timeliness and the most important factor for the agriculture. And it is also linked with the prevailing weather conditions. So this, with the help of the sensors, if we can know this proper way when this application should be done, then it is very useful. Through the hyperspectral cameras, thermal imaging or digital imaging, we can know the status of the crop and particular time when we have to apply. Then the site-specific management if in the field this uh, part is a uh, stress, uh, under stress, any type of stress, heat stress, water stress, or disease stress, that through this imaging technology, we can address that problem in the particular area. For the fertilizer application, this variable rate fertilizer is uh, now coming in the picture. So, if we use this technology, this can apply the site-specific management for where the fertilizer is required, where the weeding operation is required, or where the insect or disease control is required. Otherwise, when we are using unnecessary chemicals or excess of the chemical, it is also affecting the ecosystem and ultimately the environment. So that can be also addressed with this use of these things. This, uh, uh, through the hyperspectral cameras, the information are coming and through this information, the soil health problems, nutritional soil health, soil nutrition, uh, water quality, water quantity, climate, and the weeds, pest, and the machine, or even the machine operation, when we are talking about the autopiloted uh, operation, this autopiloted operation, this information is required that what is the, will be the path, what will be the functionality, so that can be also be addressed. So major three areas where this uh, drone can be used. The, for the work of the crop scouting. This soil, water, pest, climate conditions, and crop stage. Because the, at the different crop stage, uh, this different type of the operation is required in agriculture. And uh, the crop stage, we can know with the phenotypic or any developments. So that can be used uh, with these uh, spectral uh, signatures, the stress of the drought, the heat, nutrition uh, deficiency, or the pest attack, or the stage of the crop health uh, can be addressed. The irrigation scheduling, even when uh, automation in agriculture, this irrigation scheduling can be linked with it. The plant protection requirements, as I told that uh, when and where we have to use the pesticide or insecticide or the VG sites. Judicious use of the other inputs. Because uh, commonly in agriculture, we are uh, using fertilizer NPK, but we are forgetting about the micronutrients, and that is affecting the, uh, a lot on the yield. So that can be also utilized with this. This is the some uh, pictures. Uh, this is the uh, first one is the digital picture taken by the drone and then other the thermal pictures. So on this photo reflectance index, water band index, uh, these problems 
can be addressed very uh, effectively. And it uh, as, uh, seems that it is not, uh, it is only imaginary, but not, it is in actually, it's also working. Some examples of the wine air ma management, uh, this uh, nitrogen assessment and the mapping of the crops, it is being used in, in Netherlands or US or the Australia also. Then, uh, then the surveying and the mapping. This uh, can be used for uh, this uh, estimation before uh, forecasting of the crop yield uh, well in advance so that the planning and management uh, means price, price fixing and other things can be used. The geotagged map also for the precise uh, precision agriculture, it can be useful. The autopiloting information for the contouring informations. And uh, this is also one, uh, just a picture please, for the please house. conclude, Dr. Sir. Yes. So this is, uh, this picture is uh, of the IARI Delhi itself. Then uh, this tomato field crop density assessment. This is uh, from the Australia. And this is uh, assessing of the crop yield potential 2.5 months ad in advance we can. This is the soil mapping, which type of the soil and the variation in the field we can do. This soil erosion and the weed positions we can know. This, is, uh, this can be also used of the crop insurance and the settlement of the claims very on the basis of the scientific basis. And uh, there are several initiatives uh, has been done uh, in past and recent also. This planning and management, forestation, deforestation, wild element, uh, animal uh, movements, uh, and this and uh, the spraying and the dusting operation we can use. The seeding and planting, it can be also addressed by the drone itself. And in 18 minutes, 10,000 plants can be planted and it has, the pilot work has been done in Australia. But still, it having the challenges. This technology has been challenges for our Indian conditions itself, and as well as the, the technology itself, that the limitation of the payload and the battery life is still limiting this technology to go. And the lack of knowledge base database. We are taking the images, thermal and hyperspectral images, but we have to crop specific and the different database so that we can come to maximum accuracy conclusion, inferences. So that is also required. Then the lack of the skilled personnel for the operation. It is most important because here, if it is not being operated by the proper people, skilled people, trained people, the accidents can take place and that's why this uh, government of India is also uh, having uh, some regulation and DG, without the DGCA uh, approval, no one can fly this drone. Thank you. Thank, uh, thanks for a very uh, interesting topic. Uh, can we have one or two questions, please? No questions? Thank you. We move on to the next speaker. Thank you. Dr. Tapan Kumar Pura. On safety aspects of agriculture tractor trailer systems and the very important aspect as far as accidents on the farms are concerned. Dr. Pura, please. Uh, good morning, everyone. Respected chairman and my teacher, Dr. S.P. Sirvastav, dignitary on the dais of the dais. Uh, I am here to present one of the important uh, safety aspect of tractor trailer system. So 
uh, you know that one of the important prime mover in agriculture is tractor. Most of the uh, power uh, means mechanical operations, the tractor provided the power as a power source. And uh, you can see that in case of the uh, 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 terrain conditions, the power limitation is there. That that's why the we are moving from um, uh, earlier manual to animal animal to now tractor drone equipments and. Uh, in terms of the uh, tractor, uh, domestic tractor availability. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So India is the largest of tractors, and also it exports the tractor. Earlier we were we are importing, but now we are exporting the tractors. And one of the important uh, good phenomena is taking place that farm power availability now increasing due to mechanization, and Still, the tractors uh, are uh, underutilized because for profitable use of the tractors, the annual use of the tractors should be around 1,000 hours. But in Indian farms, the uh, annual use of the tractor is limited to 450 to 600 hours. And that, that is the, uh, that's why they, they are, they, the farmers who are taking uh, uh, the tractor in, uh, for their use, they are sometimes go in losses. And tractor is used for different activities, Agri uh, uh, agriculture operation like tillage, mainly tillage and uh, sowing and other operations, harvesting also. But uh, most of the cases we are we can see that tractor being used for haulage purpose, like the transportations of uh, goods and materials. In most of the cases in town and cities, you will see that tractor being used for uh, mostly uh, this uh, transportation. And the uh, airport also, you might have seen that. It being used for luggage transportations, and the uh, transport uh, trans transportation they use the trolley system, trailers. So tractor is uh, multiply used, and the uh, operation includes the haulage of pro produce, and the trailer systems also sometimes you might have seen in the road, the due to due to d different regions it being uh, tipped and the uh, the, the uh, the tractor get uh, met accidents, and that uh, it, it is been shown that farm accidents are around 334 per lakhs of workers, and fatality rate is 18.3 persons per lakh, and that that out of that 35 per 30 percent of the tractors ac accident is due to agriculture machineries, and one of the agriculture machines is tractor trailer. Okay, uh, there are different accidents. Uh, you can see that the, the different type of haulage system being used in the tractors and the uh, the transportation use of agriculture reduce, uh, produce as well as other operations like uh, their transportation of human being in the marriage and all. They also, they are using the tractor trail system. In these connections, we have conducted a survey in two two regions. One is Haryana and another one is Maharashtra because. One is uh, mostly used for agriculture transportation, and another area, the Maharashtra, is used for transportation, no ag agriculture commodities. So we found that, that there are different designs in the tractors, and uh, we found that mostly the tractor trailers are of two types. One is one axle type and two axle types, and uh, the and different area that uh, the prominent is. Uh, Two axles, whereas Haryana and uh, the, the single axle is in the case of Maharashtra. And if you uh, see the design variations, the size of the trolley and the uh, axle, single axle and double axles are different, and the, uh, uh, depending upon the requirement. And you can see the payload also different for single and double axles. Uh, then loading patterns are different. This loading pattern uh, difference causes the tipping of the uh, tractor trailer and instability. And the back, back, uh, there are uh, breaking provisions are provided in the double axle tra tractor tra uh, trailer system, but not in the single axle. Most of the cases, and that causes sometimes the the the, the accidents. And uh, 
that uh, the condition of response of the tractor instability is different for different uh, uh, single axle and double axle tra trailer system. And you will find that different terrain conditions, the instability is get more. In case of down slope, that instability is maximum. And in off, sl off, 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 off slope also there are, but in plain road condition, that uh, the accident is minimum. So uh, the, the, it, it was recommended that tractor trailers should be, the operators should be trained for operating the tractor trailers. And tractor trailers need to be designed to minimize the tipping or the load distribution is such that the variables should be uniformly loaded and the all, all, all over the uh, uh, trolley and the, the tipping should be, and uh, mostly the tractor trailer should be of uh, rarely pro provided with the safety envelopes so that the in the night hours when it is working, uh, the, the other can uh, see that slow moving vehicles and can identify the that. And the tractor trailer hitching system should be reduced the vibration, especially in the longitudinal direction, and reduce the vibration can re uh, 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 re reduce the chances of uh, tipping. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kura. Can we have one or two questions on this? No? Th thank you. The problems have been identified. Being a doctor from the IARI, if some solutions have been given? Yes, we have given the, some solutions. That we have not discussed. OK. Uh, in, 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 in case of the uh, pre, um, currently used tractor trailer system, you, we are having one axle or two axle tra tra tractor trailers. Double axle tractor trailers are, uh, some of times, they are having, not providing the brake system, braking system of the trailer. That, that should be provided so to prevent uh, uh, agriculture accident. And in tractors, uh, and hitching should be as near to the tractor. Sometimes hitching, uh, the hitching length is uh, being uh, increased from the 70 to 90 centimeters, and that causes accident. And the, mostly uh, the tractor trailer accident takes place due to the rust driving in the high road condition, high, highway conditions. And that, that causes it. And that's why the trained main power operator should be trained for uh, operation of the tractor trailer system. These are the uh, recommendations you have given that in that paper. Thank you, Dr. Khura. Now we move to next speaker, Dr. Rauf Ahmad Pari. Uh, he'll be speaking of current trends and futuristic approaches in digital technologies for input efficient sustainable agriculture. Respected chair of the session, our own mentor, Dr. Epi Srivastava, co-chair, Dr. Vingra, fellow speakers, ladies and gentlemen. A very good morning to all of you. And uh, within the next 10 minutes, I will be taking you towards the current and the future of Indian agriculture production system. This is uh, the history of our Indian agriculture system. We have been moving from food scarce to the transformation of the food shortage. Then we became the food sufficient, and then it was food security, and now we are sur surplus from 2010 onwards. That is the story of the Indian agriculture system. You see the food grains, you see the vegetables, milk, you vegetable, um, fish, other products. The time is of increase that has been from 1950 to 2022. But you see the bottom of this table. That is the net zone area. There has been only 1.1% increase. Compared to what we have been able to do in food grains, it is 6.2 times. In vegetables, it is 13.3 times. So it seems from the less we have been able to grow more, we have, it has led to the rainbow uh, this uh, uh, revolution. We have the green revolution, white revolution, and other revolutions there. See the other side of the story? The area of production, productivity of the two major crop production systems, the lines rising up are the production and the productivity, but one that's with the constant slope, that is, we are not being able to increase the area, and it is expected that in the future, the area will further reduce, because we are leading to the industrialization, urbanization, and area is definitely going to reduce. 
So what is the solution? If we have to move onwards, we are being faced with the challenge, the major challenge being the food security. We have to ensure water security. We have to ensure energy security. And we have to manage the ill effects of climate change. We have to feed 1.6 billion population by 2050. And for that, we need to increase the food production by 400 million tons. That's why agriculture has also adopted agriculture 4.0, parallel to the industry 4.0. We are now in the stage that where we have to talk of artificial intelligence, robotics, machine learning, and other avenues. That will be the future of Indian agriculture production system. We have been shifting from 3.0, where we have been focusing on the precision agriculture, and now we'll be going to adopt these technologies in Indian agriculture system. This is the, what will, is the current on which we have to focus, that is the hydroponics, uh, vertical farming, drone technology, uh, data analytics, Internet of Things, and precision agriculture. Uh, here I want to emphasize on the smart farming. It has been rated as the number one technological opportunity with highest uh, positive impact on society. Because this smart farming, it has to take place in rural areas as well as our peri-urban areas. So the first technology that is going to revolutionize the Indian agriculture system is drone technology. Uh, earlier there has been, you have seen that the application of the drone technology uh, in Indian agriculture system, seed sowing. Last year, uh, the Haryana government, uh, they were able to do the sowing of the uh, forest land. Per day, they used to plant 20,000 to 30,000 plants by using the drone-based seed balls. So it will be also taking in the agriculture production system. In Telangana area, the, the farmers have been trying to go for the seed sowing. Uh, although mostly in India, uh, currently it has been for the forest purposes, but now it is shifting to the agriculture purposes related to sowing. Drone-based pollination. Uh, this is a video from the Netherlands that we had been able not, we need not know uh, the honeybees. Uh, we can go for the drone-based pollination. Uh, in our uh, agriculture production system in greenhouse technology, we can go, go for the pollination of these, uh, if it's working. You can get a problem with the video. So, uh, same way, the irrigation water management, see, uh, the plants uh, are, have um, come under the stress. Uh, through our uh, sensor-based technology, we have to see, uh, understand that under what conditions uh, we can emphasize that, okay, we need to water the plant. Uh, for that, there are different sensor technologies. We have the hyperspectral system, thermal system, or uh, we have the multispectral sensor. And plants uh, have the ability that when they are uh, under stress, they are the spectral characteristics changes. That we explore that uh, in which range the spectral characteristics change so that we can understand this is the band where the when the plant is under stress, in this band it will increase or decrease. That we use and so that we can uh, integrate it with the irrigation system and irrigate only when there is the stress. The crop damage assessment, it's not always possible that uh, when there is a crop damage, you go uh, by the normal means, manual means, measure the area, uh, do the assessment, and then provide the insurance to the farmers. Now, through the drone-based technology, we can go, we can assess the area, how much is actually damaged, because the damaged area will respond differently compared to the normal area whenever we use some spectral system. The crop health monitoring. If it is a diseased uh, plant, if it is a stressed plant, and if it is a healthy plant, it will respond differently to the, uh, this uh, spectrum uh, which we use. So accordingly, we can detect uh, that this plant is diseased and it needs some treatment. So for that also, we can use drone-based technology. The crop phenotyping, this is the future, uh, that uh, we can know the status of each and every plant uh, within the system. And accordingly, we can uh, use some measures whenever we find that there is a need for correction. We can come to know the, uh, the, uh, about information about every plant. The crop is spraying. It, has, it is taking place in India. 
And uh, fortunately, I have been the part of the committee that uh, developed the drone guidelines. And this year, the government has also uh, launched a new scheme in which uh, there is the subsidy for the farmers, entrepreneurs, so that we can have drone-based pesticide application uh, on farms. I have been the part of this committee because the major limitation has been that we were not having the guidelines regarding the use of drone in Indian agriculture system. There are safety concerns. There are other issues uh, so far that uh, the guidelines have been developed and now it is being implemented at feet. This is the device that we have developed. This, uh, the idea we took from the COVID-19 because when in humans we can detect the presence of the disease, why not in the plants? This is the device we developed. With the use of this device, we can detect a plant virus in tomato. We have developed it for one virus, that is GBNV virus, groundnut bat virus. So uh, using this device, we can come to know, OK, this uh, uh, plant is going to be infected. And shortly, it will be developing the symptom. So this idea we have taken from the COVID-19. The IoT, we are talking of the IoT-based agriculture. Uh, the applications relate to the smart greenhouse where we can maintain the temperature, where we can maintain the humidity, and other uh, the gas constituents for that. The IoT is the part of the Indian agriculture system. Also in the livestock management, so that if we have the livestock, we will come to know the, uh, every animal's health status. Uh, whether it is OK, what is its location, uh, uh, temperature, body temperature, and other measures. For that also, we can use RFID technology. IoT-based irrigation system, this is being implemented at very uh, um, uh, num large number of places where we are able to measure the stress or the moisture content based upon the threshold moisture content. We operate the pump, and then only at that time, uh, the um, uh, field is being irrigated. So we need not to have the continuous irrigation. This is the IRI developed IoT operator aeroponic system. Uh, using the uh, looping fertigation system, we use the nutrients. And this is IoT based greenhouse NFT hydroponic system. This is going to take place in a big scale in the Delhi. Last year there has been one workshop, and this year it will be 1,500 workshops that will be conducted for this peri urban agriculture. And it is fully automated. Uh, whenever the plant needs the nutrients, that time the flow system works. Uh, this is the aeroponics technology and uh, the vertical hydroponic farming with the uh, LED base. Uh, the blockchain technology, the important is um, uh, earlier in the first point, we were talking about the food safety. Now people are uh, bothered about the quality of the food, where from the food has come, whether it is fresh food or not. Uh, for that, uh, the uh, blockchain technology has to be adopted so that we will come to know what is the source of the produce which we are taking, whether it has come from farmer's field or not, uh, to which level it has gone. Uh, so with this, uh, also in the supply chain management, that is the distribution of seeds to the farmers, uh, we can use this blockchain technology, and this is definitely going to take place in Indian agriculture system. Uh, it, yes, uh, this is my last slide. Now, uh, related to that is the uh, blockchain technology. It is being al uh, already adopted by different countries. Uh, the simple example is the Malaysian Palm Oil Council. Uh, they ensure uh, the consumers that whether it has been produced in a sustainable way or not. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for giving glimpses of advanced technology that we are working. Uh, can we have one or two questions, please? Hello, sir. I am Anas Adrwal from Afcons Infrastructure Limited. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, from an academia point of view, you have uh, introduced um, uh, hydrophonic uh, farming or the AI status, how to get the status of the plants and seeds and all. Uh, but how, uh, what are the challenges for the implementation? As in the value chain, uh, uh, there are the implementation agencies or the technology providers are there, or the end user, the farmers, who are very much illiterate in India and they are having a very limited land parcels. So uh, what is the implementation uh, is going to be in India in, the, in our scenario? Uh, yeah, th that is absolutely a right question, that the technologies are there, but the acceptability level and the penetration level we have to think of. The first point is we have to focus on indigenous production of all sensor technology. Uh, I was trying to work on this plant virus. I need a hyperspectral camera. It costs 17 lakh rupees. If the manufacturer, it's the academy or the industry that have to work together. 
uh, if we are able to provide the affordable sensor technology, the overall technology will be also affordable. When the technology is affordable, it is advantageous, farmers are definitely going to adopt it. It is the economics that is affecting the penetration level. So we have to focus on indigenous pro production of uh, these sensor technologies. Till date, we have not been able to develop a precise soil moisture sensor that is low cost. If it is precise, it's not low cost. If it is low cost, it is not precise. You have a sensor mm -hmm. and it, getting the data. Uh, using a, a low cost sensor, adapting artificial intelligence and computer aided techniques, can you help uh, farmers in improving the productivity? That is my one, uh, first question. Then, second question is you are using drone sensors and also you are using a remote sensing satellite data. How far they are comparable? Is there any uh, compatibility problem is there? How you are solving it? Okay. Uh, the first uh, point is uh, related to the, uh, I don't feel that uh, we talk of the low cost of technology. We have to talk of affordable, precise technology. Because if we focus on the cost, we may be losing the quality. We have to focus on the point where the precision of the data, as well as the cost, the, both are at some common point. So first point is that we have to try to reduce cost, but not at the loss of the co uh, data quality. So that, that's the first point. Now regarding the second point re uh, related to this, uh, the satellite data and the drone visit. The first point is satellite has particular interval. Let us suppose uh, I want to see, uh, download the data from the satellite. At particular instant of time, it will be crossing some location. But when you have the drone-based uh, system, at any time you can get the field data. At any time you can have the real-time application. Drone-based system is more preferred compared to satellite-based system. Uh, hello. Uh, first of all, I must congratulate you for wonderful presentation. I have two short questions. One question is. Uh, this all technologies are high cost technologies, probably a community or state will have to own it. That is the answer rather than question. Yeah, mm, One uh, thing, mm. I was looking at TED talk by some MIT guy. What he was saying, he, you can produce Ni Nairobi bananas in any country. Uh, let's say a Kashmir apples. So through satellites and sensors and computers and IoT, they will transfer minutes to minutes data to uh, say Chennai or some place and within the same climate and humidity etc you can grow apples in a greenhouse or something one 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 thing is that and second thing is this all uh, mm, this technologies are available and uh, our land holdings are very small so probably the, uh, that how to solve that Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, you talk of the uh, apples. I actually belong to Kashmir, and uh, uh, thank you for your comment. Uh, regarding the first point, that is uh, the growing some uh, this uh, product at some other places. Uh, when we talk of climate smart agriculture, it means you are able to control the conditions which you give to the crop. Let us suppose you want to uh, grow some uh, product at very low temperature. You have the greenhouse system. You have the controller for the temperature, you maintain that temperature. You need that humidity for that. Um, those parameters can be controlled. So this is the uh, first point. The regarding the cost economics, let me talk of the example of the drone-based technology. The drone-based technology is mostly preferred for hilly areas. If we think of the uh, hilly areas, it is very small land holding. But the terrain is difficult. You cannot uh, take a machine to the hilly terrain. So for them, for spraying, the drone-based technology is uh, most preferred. So when uh, you have such technologies, the ownership is not uh, good. We have to go for the custom hiring purpose. That is why the current scheme that government has launched for this uh, drone-based technology, it is that if some of my friend uh, uh, youth come forward, they can uh, get the subsidy on drone and do on the farmer's field. 
um, earn this and farmer need not to purchase it. So the custom hiring model has to be followed for this uh, advanced technology. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So with this, uh, all presentations have been completed Thank you. very nicely. Thanks, Dr. Rao. Now I request uh, Dr. Dhinga, co-chairman of the session, to say a few words. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you all for uh, your patience and uh, listening to all the speakers very carefully and interacting with all of them in a very decent manner. First of all, I would like to thank Safety and Quality Forum of the Institution of Engineers India to provide me an opportunity to come and interact with all of you. Uh, friends, this uh, topic that uh, safety for sustainable development, role of artificial intelligence, I think it's very important. Safety, we all know, is very important because if we are unsafe, it can lead to injury, illness, disability, or even loss of life, death. So I think safety comes first. And how we can bring in artificial intelligence in making our machines, in making our uh, factory premises or daily life safe, I think it is a need of the art. And uh, just for your information, uh, we are uh, into this. We are also trying to use artificial intelligence in ICAR. ICAR is also supporting some startups. I would like to share a few words on that. Like cotton picking, it's a problem, mechanized cotton picking. So the mechanized harvesters what are you, which are being used in other countries, their cultivation is different from our cultivation, right? So there are some startups which have come up with the robotic interventions using uh, AI image analysis. Basically, they are using analysis of the image and then picking the cotton balls, the seed cotton. So still it is in the development stage. And the other thing which people are using, software as a service. So they are gathering the information, a lot of data from the farmer's field, processing it, and then sending advisory services to the farmers who have su subscribed to those services. So there are many startups, and I think a few of them will mature into credible uh, enterprises where they will be able to use that data because everywhere you cannot use uh, high-end computers for calculations. So they are putting one central computer, a lot of data comes, which is analyzed using AI and other machine learning, deep learning, and other technologies, and advisory is given to the farmer. So that is one. And other things which my friends have uh, talked about, drones and robots, yes. The drones we are using for aerial imaging and then taking decisions. So that require, again requires a lot of image analysis. So whatever I have learned till date is use of image analysis using artificial intelligence for making some decisions to make our systems efficient and safe. With these words, I will not take much time. And I will be very uh, happy if the industry participants from the audience, they can come forward and join hands with ICR and our other academic and research institutions where we can work together to develop these technologies further. Some of my colleagues, some of my senior friends, they are working on deep learning for grain storage because you know grain storage is very important for food security in our country as well as the world. So that will be very interesting if the industry partners, they come up and join hands with the academic and research institutions so that our synergy is there. So we can use the synergy to develop the technologies indigenously for our country. No doubt we will have to import certain things. We are not making graphical processing units and others. But yes, usage we can, applications we can develop. With these words, I hand over uh, to Dr. Sirivastaji, who is the chairman of this session. For thank, thank, thank you, Dr. Dinga. Actually, this cost technology is always a very tricky question as far as farmers are concerned. And this wide range of farmers. So any technology which is viable, it will be accepted to a large number of farmers. Uh, my other request to counsel, Dr. Dhingra is here, such as, please focus a little more on backward regions also. How can we take these technologies to backward districts where a lot of machines are being introduced. I have seen, I have worked in backward regions for quite some time. Machines are being introduced without proper scientific backup. Uh, so so may, maybe, some of you could look into, at the same time, look into backward regions. Uh, with these words, I really, I'm really thankful to organizers for giving me opportunity, for my colleagues' opportunity to present their thoughts, uh, bring to this uh, audience. Uh, I'm thankful to Dr. Kamle also. He has asked me to join this. 
and uh, I'm thankful to speakers and the wonderful audience for the lively interaction that we have. We'll have, we'll try to improve. I'm also agriculture engineer. We'll try to improve on what presentations have been there, bring more variety to our presentation. I know a lot of work is being done, Dr. Dinga has said. Uh, so with these words, I'm, I'm thankful. Thank you to everyone. Thanks, thanks for the patient hearing of my colleagues on different aspects. Thank you, thanks to each and everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Srivastavaji. And you have to perform another job. Hello. By presenting the moment or two speaker. First, Dr. Dhingra. Chairman will present this word. Second is Kushwaji. I am also a student of Dr. Srivastava, first student. <laughs> J.P. Sinha. And Dr. Kura. Dr. Pari, are you chairman? No, no, no. Pali chairman ko bolo. Again, I request you, session chairman, the token of love to our coordinator, Dr. H. E. Kamble, please. Now, my next chairman, SQF Sri Dinesh Kumar Ji, a token of love, our chairman, session chairman, Dr. Sri Vastav, please. Thank you very much for the chairman session and the, uh, our learned speaker who have given the contribution about the uh, agriculture and food safety. Uh, also, thanks to our coordinator of the session. Now, uh, request to all of you kindly join for a tea. 15 minute break, then after an another section, I start environment and other things.